Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it is Thursday. It's August 4th. This will be our chart lesson for today, and this is going to wrap up our week. Uh, as you should know, if you're unless you're new, no, we don't do a chart lesson on Fridays, uh, just Monday through Thursdays. But anyway, quick look at the daily chart. Uh, you can see it's it was kind of a range type day. We closed down a little bit. Really, we almost closed unchanged from the previous day, and and the result of that is. Um, the rally, or, or I'm sorry, the result of that is the um, doji you see right there. And you can see we've opened, it's after 5 o'clock, so we've opened the new day here. So uh, we still did not test this high yet. I, I do not believe that's, I mean, that's close enough. If we turn down, you could say that was a successful test that failed. But uh we could go higher here. We may be going to test the measured move. I showed you the measured move yesterday, which is basically this leg and then, all right, I'm sorry, this leg here over to here. We've already far surpassed this leg versus this one. This leg is much, These there's two legs in this leg and they're much bigger than this one. So in my opinion, our, our, our better measured move is going to be to use this first leg. Then there's a two-legged correction. And so that still gives us a little more room to the upside. This does look a little like topping action. We'll have to see. It uh, looks like we're trading higher at the moment. Uh, one thing I will say, you can see how small this bar was today. The volatility was much lower. The volume was much lower. Uh, so we may be running out of buyers at this level. People are still maybe not willing to sell it, but the buyers aren't coming in like you would expect any longer. Maybe that drops the volume. Now, there's several reasons it could drop, but that's just one of them. So something I, that kind of comes to mind is that people are people are probably waiting for a correction now, at the very least, before they buy. Any smart traders would probably be doing that. So, uh, but we'll see. We may we may turn down, test this trend line, push up one more time. And we could continue to go higher. We'll just have to see. Let's just kind of extend this for now. And we'll see where it goes. But that's just a quick look at what it looks like today on the daily chart. Again, if you zoom in here a little more, you can see it's just a kind of a mixed day. And we closed almost unchanged. It's like it closed up slightly, but it's not much. So let's flip over to the intraday chart, 2000 tick chart, and we'll go through the trade. Okay, here's a look at it. You can see clearly it's mostly mixed trading. We, we did have a two-tier channel working down. And then we just kind of reversed and had a two-tier channel working up. And you can see we closed. This this dashed red line is the close from yesterday. And you can see we closed. Looks like maybe slightly above that, but not by much. So really almost unchanged for not enough to be to make it even worthwhile, really. So um, I would just classify this as a sideways day that early on had a downward bias and later in the afternoon after lunch had kind of an upward bias. I wouldn't call it upward until we bounced right here which kind of confirmed this upward trend line and then we did trade higher from there even though we closed back down uh, back in the near the close of yesterday. So that's that's kind of how I see it overall. Uh, I did want to say something else real quick. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. But suddenly, yesterday, I've, over the last couple of days, I've gotten a lot of emails, people saying their tick chart doesn't match my tick chart. Uh, I haven't changed anything. I've verified all my settings. Nothing has changed on my settings. Um, the one thing I will say is that no tick charts are alike. Now, I know that we've been able to come up with some settings that we've shared with you that uh, allow you to get your chart really close to mine. And, and what you want to do is you want to load 21 days of data. You want to use for your trading hours, you want to use CME, US Index Futures, ETH, which that stands for Extended Trading Hours or something of that nature, I believe. Uh, I believe that's what it means. But basically, you're, you're using the 24-hour chart. And then you want to put a check in the box that says break of, at end of day. And, if you, and we were getting almost identical charts by doing that, but suddenly they're not identical anymore. Um, I believe that what we're going to find out is, uh, even though I use NinjaTrader, I do not use NinjaTrader for my broker. Um, I've got a, 
lifetime multi-broker license that I bought prior to 2015, so I can use any broker I want that will accept NinjaTrader. Anybody that's come in since 2015 uh, has no option. If you want to use NinjaTrader, you use their broker. And uh, I don't think they offer CQG as a data option any longer. And so I do use CQG and have been using them for years. And I don't see any difference in my charts. Everything looks very similar. Uh, but it seems like most everybody else is seeing a difference lately. And so the only thing I can contribute that to is the data that Ninja Traders using. So they've either changed the data or changed something with the ticks. Maybe they're filtering the ticks or um, I'm not sure, but obviously something must have changed on that side because all of your charts are looking more similar to each other than mine are. And I can't find, I don't see any lag or any slower speeds. And I'm still using the same data broker. They haven't changed anything with the way they, they count their ticks or anything like that. So again, I can only assume that NinjaTrader has changed. Your, whatever broker NinjaTrader pushes you to now, something's changed with their data. So if you get at the option of using CQG and you want to get your charts closer to mine, make sure you use that data. Um, if I understood the last person that told me that you could no longer use CQG, CQG with uh, NinjaTrader. So I don't know that to be true because I don't use them for a broker. So I never really contact them or keep up with their brokerage fees and commissions and things like that. So I, I can't tell you a whole lot about it. Uh, but anyway, that's what I think is going on. They've changed something. Uh, and that's what's causing the difference in the charts. Somewhere something's changed and, and I can't see any change on my side. And I haven't changed any of the settings. I haven't changed my broker. I haven't changed my data. So my guess is they've changed something over at NinjaTrader, whoever your brokers are over there now. But anyway, that's enough about that. Uh, the thing is, it doesn't matter if your chart is exactly like mine. Tick charts are just not static like time-based charts. They're based on accounting of the ticks. And if they filter your ticks or if you're missing some ticks or there's something going on with your data, uh, your chart will be different. They can't be the same because of the way they count them. Of course, time-based charts are all identical, but tick-based charts are not identical. Even if you everything's the same, occasionally a bar or two may look different still. It's just impossible to make them look as the same and it doesn't matter I can take your chart and trade it and do just as well and, and if you're a seasoned chart reader and trader you could take my chart and do just as well although at the end of the day our trades might be slightly different so the only thing it really affects is when you come to compare your trades to mine it might affect that and there's and there's probably not much we can do about it unfortunately However, as far as the trading goes, just because your chart doesn't look like mine and you're not seeing the same trades, uh, there's what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven trades that are colored here today. There's a bunch more green ones. So I guarantee you, you can probably still find seven good trades on your chart. And they, some of them may be the same trades and some of them may not be. But you only need two or three good trades a day. And so you can find that. And that's all you need. If you're taking many more trades than that, you're just you're 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 over trading. You're press you're you're pressing trades because generally there's only on average seven to ten trade good really good sure things a day. And uh, and, and several of these are probably reversal patterns, which wouldn't which would take it down even lower. So because most of you are too new to be even looking or much less thinking about reversal type patterns and things like that. Stay away from those. They're very advanced and they will just slow your learning process progress. So don't mess with them. Just leave them alone. Uh, stick to what you understand. Keep studying and learning and you'll start to understand more as you get more screen time and you see what we're doing and it'll all come to you eventually. But if you try to rush things, trust me, all you're going to do is slow your learning progress. And, uh, and you're going to have a lot less luck. So anyway, let's get to the trades. Early on when I came, uh, 7 o'clock, let's zoom on in here. Go through this real quick. Uh, 7 o'clock came just as we're coming down and bottoming out right here. Uh, at that point, uh, all we really had 
was this channel here and then of course the yellow one formed a little bit later here closer to eight o'clock uh, so prior to that it, we just had a trend up and uh, I didn't even draw it but you can see that and you get a close outside new high and now you got one coming down you get a close outside new low but seven o'clock comes right down in here and that's just the first entry it doesn't quite make a new low and then it comes up here and then it it makes a there's a failure right here that's a reversal but with that doji in there and three bars sideways and being still mostly below the ema i don't think you want to take a reversal there uh the way i looked at it was when it came up and pulled back again it looks more like a double bottom right there and so it looks like one leg up and then a second leg up and right there, I, I like going long right there on that trap because I guarantee you that trapped people. Uh, turns out it's not a reversal. It is a trap and you get a quick move out of it and an easy scalp, but that's it. And again, I marked it green just because we're running up and down here. And it's kind of really, you can see how flat the EMA is by this time. Uh, it still has a little bit, and if it would have went on higher, it probably would have turned back up. So there's still a little upward bias here but not a clear one so i'm not crazy about that and you definitely wouldn't want to go short there yet it looks like maybe there's a close outside here but that's not very convincing and this thing of course turns down right here so you draw your trend line down and that kind of sets this yellow channel it doesn't get confirmed till down here but that just sets it so of course it runs down there's two legs down again and that's probably really close to a measured move right there You can see that we didn't quite get there and you can see we, once we reached a measured move then it bounced so always look for your measured moves they'll help you out and here we're just kind of working sideways but finally you do you are making lower lows and lower highs here even though it's kind of got a sideways feel and of course it comes up and you get a first entry then it turns up and you get a second entry well this is an inside bar so it's not good enough to take a second entry however this looks like a double top over here and this looks like a first entry and the second entry that fails and so when it breaks below that bar that's a failure so with that being both a failed second entry long and a second entry short i think that gives you enough reason to take it and you can see it drops pretty quickly doesn't go that far uh it looks like you really get a close outside and a new low here and then you're working the other way we don't have the blue channel yet we don't really set it till a little bit later here uh, so you don't have it yet but we reverse and you just don't get a setup on that on any reversal there and then you get a break and you would expect prices to still try to <coughs> make a new high here excuse me i still have a little issue on my throat when i get to talking too much here um, but you get to sell off there there's actually a second entry long right here way away from the ema um you might take that because you are still looking for a new high and this is what eight ticks i mean you can you can see early on the the volatility and the volume which is really low here it picks up some as the day goes but it's much lower than what we've been seeing so that being said um i don't see anything or, or again you might take that when you could mark that green being that far away from the ema with no break of this i'm not crazy about it yet and of course you can see there's two legs up even though it doesn't break lower here it's a move up correction second leg up so there's two legs up then another correction and then two more legs up on the next leg so draw this trend and then you get the break two legs up and it turns down now if you had this trend line set you still might argue there's a triple test here i didn't mark it it's a really nice signal bar you can see we tested it once a couple of times there really then we tested it again and then again it makes a new high it's a big signal bar and it's right at the ema and a lot of times these are traps you take that it breaks lower and it turns on you so i was a little hesitant to take that i think you want to wait on a reversal pattern and notice then you get another notice there's clearly two legs down there and so that's a second entry uh although i don't think you want to take a second entry there either um it's one you might take but notice the break lower you got a new low it's very similar to this it's a new low 
and it could turn up and test that and turn down which is exactly what happens and when it breaks lower right here that's a failure and um, that's a quick move for a scalp and you probably don't get a runner though and then it turns down again and, you, and really that's a lower high but I don't think you want to go short at the bottom of uh, basically three bars making equal lows there almost of course it runs down then you get two legs up there's a second entry short right there but you got that little channel working up and so i'm a little afraid of that one if you took it it works i mean again it's very it's pretty small it's like eight ticks again i mean when's the last time you remember volume being this low and having eight tick signal bars it's been a long time so anyway you can say you had a break in new high and this uh you might go short here again i i like to wait on a lower high or second entry or something and, and you get a lower high right here with a nice signal bar so that's the better place to enter and of course you make a couple of legs down and you bounce down here and you probably have this now you might have had this a little lower or something but uh you should have had this by now off these two lows if nothing else and then pull it up and of course it turns but again i don't see anything that makes me want to go long here until you start to see this momentum and then it's too late you run up you get a close outside and move up and it turns down right off the trend line and that confirms that trend line that's a real bearish bar way away from the ema so i like going short right there um unfortunately you don't get a big runner it comes back and you get a lower high now this breaks higher and then turns down and goes lower so it's an engulfing bar by the time that closes you cannot go short there so if you wanted to use if you wanted to trade this as a lower high you had to do the engulfing bar and i'm not as crazy about them they're not as reliable uh, although sometimes they're good setups because they they usually trap people on the wrong side and which they did here and you can see it wasn't long before we're headed lower there's technically a new low right there and so you get a first entry and even though it didn't break higher, it makes a higher low by those two matching. So that you could argue that's a second entry, but you still would have to enter on the inside bar. And generally that we don't enter on the inside bar. So that kind of kills that trade. Yeah, you could even argue it's a, a failure, but it didn't break higher to give you a failure. So you can't really use that to, to bolster the trade. You just have to skip it really. Then it comes back here. And now you could say there's two attempts, although that's a big move and two legs up. So it's a little hard to call that that. But that's definitely a second entry off the key entry point. Well, again, with a seven tick bar, you could actually get in that and use the eight tick stop rule almost. I mean, how long has it been? And that's a pretty nice move. There's a lower high here, but that looks a little sideways. And notice how it does come back. But notice it makes another low. First entry, second entry. So you get another second entry. Big, nice, bearish bar. I wouldn't enter that side, that on an engulfing bar, even though I believe that broke higher and then turned down. But I wouldn't enter that on an engulfing bar regardless because that's like a doji. And this could end as another small bar or more of a, uh, making it look more sideways it could have closed above the ema uh, or even reversed because we weren't we just came off the midline and we might be going back to the trend line but it ends up turning down i, I like it for the second entry short but i would not trade it as the engulfing bar and of course this is where it bounces here and you don't know what's going on down here even though there's a second entry long right there uh, it makes a lower high than that one, so you can't call that a higher low. I, you know, if we're going to go higher here, I'd want to see a reversal right here and make sure you still had room back up because we could just be bouncing off the midline again. And so there's reasons to think maybe go long. But, um, I mean, again, this is one you might call this, you might mark it green, but I think that's a little risky. And it turns out to be a nice trade. And you don't get any other chance to enter that. It runs up here. gets a close outside a new high. And it looks like it's going to turn down. And then it bounces again. And runs up and sure it makes a sure thing new high. And guess what? That's another first entry, second entry. Way away from the EMA. And that pretty much confirms this trend line. You really confirm this trend line here. Because it, it really originates back here. And uh, But you definitely... Even if you didn't consider that confirming it, it definitely does here. 
quick easy move and then it makes another run up uh, unfortunately uh, you get a lower high here but I don't think you want to take that two sideways looks like a reversal or failure right here but you got that support right there not much room if you had a plenty of room here or if you could get in that with a limit order and give yourself plenty of room maybe you take that trade I think you're better off to wait and uh, you do get a breakout pullback short, no entry. And it runs straight down and it bounces here. And that confirms that trend line. But I don't think you want to go long there because that's the first break of the down trend line. So it's kind of hard to know which one of these trend lines is going to win out. But by the, it, it actually tests it three times right here. Uh, but it's not, by that time it's just congestion and it tests it again right here. And it actually finally breaks out and then pulls back and tests it yet again and actually uh, opens above. So you get a test, a pullback test of that too. So if it breaks higher there, you could definitely treat that like a range trade on a breakout pullback. And just the fact that look how many times that trend line held. So it looks when you test something that many times and it holds, prices are going to go higher for a bit. Now they may not go all the way back up here, but they're going to go higher. And you'll probably get a scalp out of it. And so there's actually a reversal here. Notice this is this swing low is a little bit lower than this last one. So you move up, you get two legs up. It turns down on the second entry. Uh, this doesn't look like it's going to trap many people, though, or fool many people. It's not very bearish. And you can see. So I'm not as crazy about the reversal right there because it, it's probably, it may not act like a trap. Uh, it ends up shooting on up and going higher. But, so you may take that one, but I, there's reasons I don't like it. I just explained it. You're, you're really kind of working sideways there. And look, there's a bar with six ticks. A bar with six ticks. <laughs> I mean, it almost feels like the good old days. Uh, but anyway, it runs up. I, and, and, the, and what's going to happen, um, I say the good old days, but now that everybody's gotten used to this really fast, and swift market if we go back to the to the way it used to be for years people are going to be so bored and people are going to you're going to, you know these 10 second trades and 15 second multi-point moves will be a thing of the past and you'll sit there and you might have to wait 10 or 15 minutes on a single little four tick scalp that's the way it used to be so but that was the normal then and i didn't i was starting to think we may not ever go back to that but maybe we will anyway Turns up and we bounce again here. It's just a first entry. There's no trap or anything there. Uh, and you can see it's not long before you get a break. Move to a new high or attempt to move to a new high that fails. Then it runs down here and you actually get a second entry here, but signal bar is not very good. Uh, you can't call that a failure because it really broke lower here first. So just not much happening. We're just kind of bouncing along. But notice that we tested this multiple times. That's a triple test. And that's also a first entry, second entry. There's a new high there. First entry. And then right when it breaks above this bar right here, that's your second entry. I marked that one green. And But with a triple test, with that good a signal bar, with enough room back to the EMA, you may, this is close to being able to call it blue. Um, and I'll tell you why I left it green because notice that we didn't get to the high here. So that gives you concern. And then we can't get to the low here. So that gives you concern to the low side. It makes you think, and you can see how the EMA has gotten real flat. So it's really hard to know. There's nobody winning out here and there's not a lot of evidence to say, Hey, prices are going higher or prices are going lower. They could really go either direction here. And so this is not a sure thing kind of setup. So again, that's why I marked it green. But there's reasons to say, hey, this is worth risking for at least a scalp. And that's all you would have got because notice how it comes back right here and runs, it takes all the the runners out and then moves a little higher and then comes back again. And again, this is what the market used to do quite a bit of. And then notice there's two legs back here. So that's a second entry long. And again, that signal bar is only eight ticks, but it's not, it doesn't qualify. It doesn't close in the upper one third. And it turns, it turns out they probably trapped some shorts here. 
you could actually look at that as a failure because it is a failure. Notice the new low here and you get a first entry and a second entry, but it just looks a little congested too. It's another one. It should at least probably be green. And if you recognize that it's a failure and a second entry, maybe you take it because it obviously trapped people. Look at it go. And then it just turns down and comes right back down to the trend line again. And even though it came up short twice, we still don't get a break. In fact, we're still inside this trend channel. We bounced off of it again in the overnight over here where we reopened at 5 o'clock. So that trend line is very valid. Um, but anyway, uh, that kind of wraps up the day. So that's going to wrap up our week as well. So yeah, the, the pretty good trading in the morning. This was a pretty obvious couple of uh, two-tier channel working down at some point. But there were some clear channels elsewhere as well. As well. Um, a little better trading day. And again, the smaller signal bars and the lower volume and the slower market give you a little more time to think. So interesting to be to be honest with you. Uh, and and it could and again I think I talked about this yesterday. It could be that we're people are just there's not enough people willing to buy at this price level after this big run up, and the sellers are afraid to come back in yet. So the market's just kind of weighing out it, see who's going to win out, and uh, we'll either get a correction and more buyers, or we'll get a turn and we'll rock it down. And just looking at that long term. Uh, daily chart or the daily chart yes um, I think we're gonna I don't think we've put in the lows yet I think we're going lower so but the chart still is still hinting at that I don't see any reason to change my opinion of that yet but it doesn't mean we can't go higher yet still before we start an, another leg down so just keep that in mind and never argue with the price action as long if this thing keeps rallying and you get chances to buy it, buy it by all means. I mean, we're scalpers, so, you know, I'll, this thing could move 100 points before it turns down. I don't think that's going to happen, but it could. So anything's always possible. Nothing's ever written in stone. The rules work 90 to 95% of the time, but they're not infallible. They do occasionally, prices do their own thing, and sometimes the rules don't hold true. But they hold true enough that we can get a real edge and take and work that edge to our advantage and um, scalp and take a lot of money from this market. So that's that's the idea. Um, anyway, we're getting towards 30 minutes. I'm going to wrap it up. We'll be back again to do it Monday. I'm going to wrap this day up and wrap this week up. This is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you next time.